She Walketh Failed and Sleeping by Charlotte Perkins Gilman, read for LibriVox.org by phone. She walketh failed and sleeping, for she knoweth not her power. She obeyeth but the pleading of her heart and the high leading of her soul unto this hour. Slow advancing, halting, creeping, comes the woman to the hour. She walketh failed and sleeping, for she knoweth not her power. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Coming by Charlotte Perkins Gilman, read for LibriVox.org by phone. Because the time is ripe, the age is ready, because the world her woman's help demands, out of the long subjection and seclusion, come to our field of warfare and confusion, the mother's heart and hands. Long as she stood aside, endured and waited, while man swung forward, toiling on alone. Now for the wary man, so long ill-mated, now for the world for which she was created, comes woman to her own. Not for herself, though sweet the air of freedom, not for herself, though dear the newborn power, but for the child who needs a nobler mother, for the whole people, needing one another, comes woman to her hour end of poem this recording is in the public domain locked inside by charlotte perkins gilman read for librivox dot org by phone she beats upon her bolted door with faint weak hands drearily walks the narrow floor sullenly sits blank walls before despairing stands life calls her duty pleasure gain her dreams respond but the blank daylights wax and wane dull peace sharp agony slow pain no hope beyond till she comes a thought she lifts her head the world grows wide a voice as if clear words were said your door o long imprisoned is locked inside End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Now by Charlotte Perkins Gilman, read for LibriVox.org by phone. With God above, beneath, beside, without, within, and everywhere, rising with the resistless tide of life and sure of getting there, patient with nature's long delay proud of her conscious upward swing not sorry for a single day and not afraid of anything with motherhood at last awake with power to do and light to see women may now begin to make the people we are meant to be end of poem this recording is in the public domain women of today by Charlotte Perkins Gilman, read for LibriVox.org, by phone. You women of today who fear so much, the women of the future, showing how the dangers of her course are such and such, what are you now? Mothers and wives and housekeepers, forsooth, great names, you cry, full scope to rule and please, room for wise age and energetic youth, but are you these? housekeepers do you then like those of yore keep house with power and pride with grace and ease no you keep servants only what is more you don't keep these wives say you wives blessed indeed are they who hold of love the everlasting keys keeping their husbands hearts alas the day you don't keep these and mothers pitying heaven mark the cry from cradle deathbeds mothers on their knees why half the children born as children die you don't keep these and still the wailing babies come and go and homes are waste and husbands hearts fly far there is no hope until you dare to know the thing you are end of poem this recording is in the public domain
Boys Will Be Boys by Charlotte Perkins Gilman, read for LibriVox.org by phone. Boys will be boys, and boys have had their day. Boy mischief and boy carelessness and noise extenuated all, allowed, excused, and smoothed away. Each duty missed, each damaging wild act by this meek statement of unquestioned fact. Boys will be boys. Now women will be women mark the change calm motherhood in place of boisterous youth no warfare now to manage and arrange to nurture with wise care is woman's way in peace and fruitful industry her sway in love and truth end of poem this recording is in the public domain for fear by Charlotte Perkins Gilman, read for LibriVox.org by phone. For fear of prowling beasts at night, they block the cave. Women and children hid from sight, men scarce more brave. For fear of warrior sword and spear, they barred the gate. Women and children lived in fear, men lived in hate. For fear of criminals today, we lock the door women and children still to stay hid evermore come out you need no longer hide what fear you now no wolf nor lion waits outside only a cow come out the world approaches peace war nears its end no warrior watches your release only a friend come out the night of crime has fled day has begun here is no criminal to dread only your son the world half yours demands your care waken and come make it a woman's world safe fair garden and home end of poem this recording is in the public domain mother to child by charlotte perkins gilman read for librivox dot org by phone how best can i serve thee my child my child flesh of my flesh and dear heart of my heart once thou wast within me i held thee i fed thee by the force of my loving and longing i led thee now we are apart i may blind thee with kisses and crush with embracing thy warm mouth in my neck and our arms interlacing but here in my body my soul lives alone and thou answerest me from a house of thine own that house which i builded which we builded together thy father and i and which thou must live o my darling and die not one stone can i alter one atom relay not to save or defend thee or help thee to stay that gift is completed how best can i serve thee o child if they knew how my art aches with loving how deep and how true how brave and enduring how patient how strong how longing for good and how fearful of wrong is the love of thy mother could i crown thee with riches surround overflow thee with fame and with power till the whole world should know thee with wisdom and genius to hold the world still to bring laughter and tears joy and pain at thy will still thou mightst not be happy such have lived and in sorrow the greater of mind the wider and deeper the grief it can find the richer the gladder the more thou canst feel the keen sting that a lifetime is sure to reveal o my child must thou suffer is there no way my life can save thine from a pain is the love of a mother no possible gain no labour of hercules search for the grail no way for this wonderful love to avail god in heaven o oh, teach me my prayer has been answered the pain thou must bear is the pain of the world's life which thy life must share thou art one with the world though i love thee the best and to save thee from pain i must save all the rest well with god's help i'll do it thou art one with the rest i must love thee in them thou wilt sin with the rest and thy mother must stem the world's sin thou wilt weep and thy mother must dry the tears of the world lest her darling should cry i will do it god helping 
and i stand not alone i will gather a band of all loving mothers from land unto land our children are part of the world do you hear they are one with the world we must hold them all dear love all for the child's sake for the sake of my child i must hasten to save all the children on earth from the jail and the grave for so and so only i lighten the share of the pain of the world that my darling must bear even so and so only end of poem this recording is in the public domain a question by charlotte perkins gilman read for LibriVox.org by beth thomas why is it god that mothers hearts are made so very deep and wide how does it help the world that we should hold such welling floods of pain till we are old because when we were young one grave was laid one baby died end of poem this librivox recording is in the public domain the housewife by charlotte perkins gilman read for LibriVox dot org by elaine conway england here is the house to hold me cradle of all the race here is my lord and my love here are my children dear here is the house enclosing the dear loved dwelling place why should i ever weary for aught that i find not here here for the hours of the day and the hours of the night bound to the bands of duty riveted tight duty older than adam due to that sore acceptance utter and hopeless in the eyes of the serving school food and the serving of food that is my day-long care what and when we shall eat what and how we shall wear soiling and cleaning of things that is my task in the main soil them and clean them and soil them soil them and clean them again to work at my trade by the dozen and never a trade to know to plan like a chinese puzzle fitting and changing so to think of a thousand details each in a thousand ways for my own immediate people and a possible love and praise my mind is trodden in circles tiresome narrow and hard useful commonplace private simply a small backyard and i the mother of nations blind their struggle and vain i cover the earth with my children each with a housewife's brain end of poem this recording is in the public domain Wedded Bliss by Charlotte Perkins Gilman Read for LibriVox.org by Elaine Conway, England O oh, come and be my mate, said the eagle to the hen I love to soar, but then I want my mate To rest for ever in the nest Said the hen, I cannot fly I have no wish to try, but I joy to see my mate careening through the sky. They wed and cried, Ah, this is love, my own. And the hen sat, the eagle soared alone. Oh, come and be my mate, said the lion to the sheep. My love for you is deep. I slay a lion should. But you are mild and good, said the sheep. I do no ill, could not had I the will. But I joy to see my mate pursue, devour and kill. They wed and cried, Ah, this is love, my own. And the sheep browsed, the lion prowled alone. Oh, come and be my mate, said the salmon to the clam you are not wise but i am i know sea and stream as well 
you know nothing but your shell said the clam i'm slow of motion but my love is all devotion and i joy to have my mate traverse lake and stream and ocean they wed and cried ah this is love my own and the clam sucked the salmon swam alone end of poem this recording is in the public domain females by charlotte perkins gilman read for LibriVox.org by christine g the female fox she is a fox the female whale a whale the female eagle holds her place as representative of race as truly as the male the mother hen doth scratch for her chicks and scratch for herself beside the mother cow doth nurse her calf yet fares as well as her other half in the pasture free and wide the female bird doth soar in air the female fish doth swim the fleet foot mare upon the course doth hold her own with the flying horse yea and she beateth him one female in the world we find telling a different tale it is the female of our race who holds a parasitic place dependent on the male not so saith she ye slander me no parasite am i i earn my living as a wife my children take my very life why should i share in human strife to plant and build and buy the human race holds highest place in all the world so wide yet these inferior females wive and raise their little ones alive and feed themselves beside the race is higher than the sex though sex be fair and good a human creature is your state and to be human is more great than even womanhood the female fox she is a fox the female whale a whale the female eagle holds her place as representative of race as truly as the male End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. We as Women by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. Read for LibriVox.org by Christine G. There's a cry in the air about us, we hear it before behind, of the way in which we as women are going to lift mankind with our white frocks starched and ruffled and our soft hair brushed and curled hats off for we as women are coming to save the world fair sisters listen one moment and perhaps you'll pause for ten the business of women as women is only with men as men what we do we as women we have done all through our life the work that is ours as women is the work of mother and wife but to elevate public opinion and to lift up erring man is the work of the human being let us do it if we can but wait warm-hearted sisters not quite so fast so far tell me how we are going to lift a thing any higher than we are we are going to purify politics and to elevate the press we enter the foul parts of the world to sweeten and cleanse and bless to hear the high things we are going to do and the horrors of man we tell one would think we as women were angels and our brothers were fiends of hell we that were born of one mother and reared in the self-same place in the school and the church together we of one blood one race now then all forward together but remember every one that is not by feminine innocence the work of the world is done the world needs strength and courage and wisdom to help and feed when we as women bring these to man we shall lift the world indeed end of poem this recording is in the public domain
Girls of Today by Charlotte Perkins Gilman Read for LibriVox.org by Elaine Conway, England Girls of Today, give ear! Never since time began has come to the race of man A year, a day, an hour, so full of promise and power As the time that now is here never in all the lands was there a power so great to move the wheels of state to lift up body and mind to waken the deaf and blind as the power that is in your hands here at the gates of gold you stand in the pride of youth strong in courage and truth stirred by a force kept back through centuries long and black armed with a power threefold first you are the makers of men then be the things you preach that your own greatness teach when mothers like this you see men will be strong and free then and not till then second since adam fell have you not heard it wife look in the face of life there are duties you owe the race outside your dwelling place there is work for you alone maid and mother and wife see your own work be done be worthy a noble son help man in the upward way truly a girl today is the strongest thing in life end of poem this recording is in the public domain Women to Men by Charlotte Perkins Gilman Read for LibriVox.org by Christine G Dear Father, from my cradle I acknowledge All your wise kindness, tender care and love Through days of kindergarten, school and college Now there is one gift lacking, one above All other gifts of God, this highest trust is The one great gift beyond all power and pelf Give me my freedom, Father, give me justice, that I may guard my children and myself. My brother, you and I, were read together, we played together, even-handed quite. We went to school in every kind of weather, studied and ranked together as was right. We work together now and earn our living, you know how equal is the work we do. Come, brother, with the love you're always giving, give justice it's for me as well as you and you my lover kneeling here before me with tender eyes that burn warm lips that plead protesting that you worship eh, adore me begging my love as life's supremest meed vowing to make me happy ah oh, how dare you freedom and happiness have both one key lover and husband by the love i bear you Give justice, I can love you better, free. Son, my own son, man-child that once was lying, All rosy, tender, helpless on my breast, Your strength all dimples, your stern voice but crying, Looking to me for comfort, food and rest, Asking your life of me, and not another, And asking not in vain, till life be done. O oh, my boy, baby, is it I, your mother, who comes to ask of justice from her son now to the voter taxpayer or shirker please lay your private feelings on the shelf o oh, man at large friend comrade fellow worker i am a human being like yourself i am not your wife and mother can't be whether i would or not each to his own apart but in the world where people all together suffrage is not a question of the heart son father brother lover unsupplanted we'll talk at home this thing concerns the nation a point of justice which is to be granted by men to women who are no relation perceive this fact as salient as a steeple please try to argue from it if you can women have standing room on earth as people outside of their relation to some man as wife and sweetheart daughter sister mother each woman privately her views explains 
as people of america no other we claim the right our government maintains you who deny it stand in history's pages withholding justice pitiless and plain your record stands down all the brightened ages you fought with progress but you fought in vain end of poem this recording is in the public domain reassurance by charlotte perkins gilman read for librivox dot org by elaine conway england can you imagine nothing better brother than that which you have always had before have you seen so content with wife and mother you dare hope nothing more have you for ever prized her praised her sung her the happy queen of a most happy reign never dishonoured her despised her flung her derision and disdain go ask the literature of all the ages books that were written before women read pagan and christian satirists and sages read what the world has said there was no power on earth to bid you slacken the generous hand that painted her disgrace there was no shame on earth too black to blacken that much praised woman face eve and pandora always you begin it the ancients called her sin and shame and death there is no evil with that woman in it the modern proverb saith she has been yours in uttermost possession your slave your mother your well-chosen bride and you have owned in millionfold confession you were not satisfied peace then fear not the coming woman brother owning herself she giveth all the more she shall be better woman wife and mother than man hath known before end of poem this recording is in the public domain the socialist and the suffragist by charlotte perkins gilman read for librivox dot org by beth thomas said the socialist to the suffragist my cause is greater than yours you only work for a special class we for the gain of the general mass which every good ensures said the suffragist to the socialist you underrate my cause while women remain a subject class you never can move the general mass with your economic laws said the socialist to the suffragist you misinterpret facts there is no room for doubt or schism in economic determinism it governs all our acts said the suffragist to the socialist you men will always find that this old world will never move more swiftly in its ancient groove while women stay behind a lifted world lifts women up the socialist explained you cannot lift the world at all while half of it is kept so small the suffragist maintained the world awoke and tartly spoke your work is all the same work together or work apart work each of you with all your heart just get into the game end of poem this librivox recording is in the public domain the malingra by charlotte perkins gilman read for librivox dot org by elaine conway england exempt she does not have to work so might one talk defending long bedridden ease weak yielding ankles flaccid knees with i don't have to walk not have to work why not who gave free pass to you you're housed and fed and taught and dressed by age-long labour of the rest work other people do what do you give in honest pay for clothes and food 
then as a shield defence excuse she offers her exclusive use her function motherhood is motherhood a trade you make a living by and does the wealth you so may use squander accumulate abuse show motherhood as high or does the motherhood of those whose toil endures the farmers and mechanics wives hard-working servants all their lives deserve less price than yours why not exempt man's world runs on motherless wild our servitude and long duress our shameless harem idleness both fail to serve the child end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Anti Suffragists by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. Read for LibriVox.org by Beth Thomas. Fashionable women in luxurious homes, with men to feed them, clothe them, pay their bills, bow, doff the hat, and fetch the handkerchief, hostess or guest, and always so supplied with graceful deference and courtesy, surrounded by their horses, servants, dogs, these tell us they have all the rights they want successful women who have won their way alone with strength of their unaided arm or helped by friends or softly climbing up by the sweet aid of women's influence successful anyway and caring naught for any other woman's unsuccess these tell us they have all the rights they want religious women of the feebler sort not the religion of a righteous world a free enlightened upward-reaching world but the religion that considers life as something to back out of whose ideal is to renounce submit and sacrifice counting on being patted on the head and given a high chair when they get to heaven these tell us they have all the rights they want ignorant women college-bred sometimes but ignorant of life's realities and principles of righteous government and how the privileges they enjoy were won with blood and tears by those before those they condemn whose ways they now oppose saying why not let well enough alone our world is very pleasant as it is these tell us they have all the rights they want and selfish women pigs in petticoats rich poor wise unwise top or bottom round but all sublimely innocent of thought and guiltless of ambition save the one deep voiceless aspiration to be fed these have no use for rights or duties more duties to-day are more than they can meet and law ensures their right to clothes and food these tell us they have all the rights they want and more's the pity some good women too good conscientious women with ideas who think or think they think that women's cause is best advanced by letting it alone that she somehow is not a human thing and not to be helped on by human means just added to humanity an l a wing a branch an extra not mankind these tell us they have all the rights they want and out of these has come a monstrous thing a strange down-sucking whirlpool of disgrace women uniting against womanhood and using that great name to hide their sin vain are their words as that old king's command who set his will against the rising tide but who shall measure the historic shame of these poor traitors traitors are they all to great democracy and womanhood end of poem this librivox recording is in the public domain the ante and the fly by charlotte perkins gilman read for librivox dot org by elaine conway england the fly upon the cartwheel thought he made all the sound he thought he made the cart go on and made the wheels go round the fly upon the cartwheel has won undying fame for conceit that was colossal and ignorance the same but today he has a rival as we roll down history's track for the ante on the cartwheel 
thinks she makes the wheels go back end of poem this recording is in the public domain to the indifferent women by charlotte perkins gilman read for LibriVox.org by beth thomas a sestina you who are happy in a thousand homes or overworked therein to a dumb peace whose souls are wholly centred in the life of that small group you personally love who told you that you need not know or care about the sin and sorrow of the world do you believe the sorrow of the world does not concern you in your little homes that you are licensed to avoid the care and toil for human progress human peace and the enlargement of our power of love until it covers every field of life the one first duty of all human life is to promote the progress of the world in righteousness in wisdom truth and love and you ignore it hidden in your homes content to keep them in uncertain peace content to leave all else without your care yet you are mothers and a mother's care is the first step towards friendly human life life where all nations in untroubled peace unite to raise the standard of the world and make the happiness we seek in homes spread everywhere in strong and fruitful love you are content to keep that mighty love in its first steps forever the crude care of animals for mate and young and homes instead of pouring it abroad in life its mighty current feeding all the world till every human child shall grow in peace you cannot keep your small domestic peace your little pool of undeveloped love while the neglected starved unmothered world struggles and fights for lack of mother's care and its tempestuous bitter broken life beats in upon you in your selfish homes we all may have our homes in joy and peace when woman's life in its rich power of love is joined with man's to care for all the world end of poem this librivox recording is in the public domain women do not want it by charlotte perkins gilman read for librivox.org by christine g when the women's suffrage argument first stood upon its legs they answered it with cabbages they answered it with eggs they answered it with ridicule they answered it with scorn they thought it a monstrosity that should not have been born when the women's suffrage argument grew vigorous and wise and was not to be answered by these opposite replies they turned their opposition into reasoning severe upon the limitations of our god-appointed sphere we were told of disabilities a long array of these till one could think that womanhood was merely a disease and the maternal sacrifice was added to the plan of the various sacrifices we have always made to man religionists and scientists in amity and bliss however else they disagreed could all agree on this and the gist of all their discourse when you got down in it was we could not have the ballot because we were not fit they would not hear the reason they would not fairly yield they would not own their arguments were beaten in the field but time passed on and some way we need not ask them how whatever ails those arguments we do not hear them now you may talk of suffrage now with an educated man and he agrees with all you say as sweetly as he can twould be better for us all of course if womanhood was free but the women do not want it and so it must not be to such a tender thoughtfulness so exquisite a care not to pile on our frail shoulders what we do not wish to bear but o oh, most generous brother let us look a little more have we women always wanted what you gave to us before did we ask for veils and harems in the oriental races did we beseech to be unclean shut out of sacred places did we beg for scolding bridles and ducking stools to come and clamour for the beating stick no thicker than your thumb did we ask to be forbidden from all the trades that pay did we claim the lower wages for a man's full work to-day have we petitioned for the laws wherein our shame is shown that not a woman's child not her own body is her own 
what women want has never been a strongly acting cause when women has been wronged by man in churches customs laws why should he find this preference so largely in his way when he himself admits the right of what we ask today end of poem this recording is in the public domain song for equal suffrage by charlotte perkins gilman read for LibriVox.org by Beth Thomas. Day of hope and day of glory, after slavery and woe, comes the dawn of woman's freedom, and the light shall grow and grow, until every man and woman equal liberty shall know. In freedom, marching on. Woman's right is woman's duty, for our share in life we call. Our will it is not weakened, and our power it is not small we are half of every nation we are mothers of them all in wisdom marching on not for self but larger service has our cry for freedom grown there is crime disease and warfare in the world of men alone in the name of love we're rising now to serve and save our own as peace comes marching on by every sweet and tender tie around our heartstrings curled in the cause of nobler motherhood is woman's flag unfurled till every child shall know the joy and peace of mother's world as love comes marching on we will help to make a pruning hook of every outgrown sword we will help to knit the nations in continuing accord in humanity made perfect is the glory of the lord as his world goes marching on End of poem. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Another Star by Charlotte Perkins Gilman Read for LibriVox.org by Christine G. Suffrage Campaign Song for California Tune by a Broom There are five alight before us In the flag flying over us There'll be six on the next election We bring a new star we are coming like the others, free sisters, free brothers, in the pride of our affection for California. Chorus. A ballot for the lady, for the house and for the baby. Come vote ye for the lady, the baby, the home. Star of hope and star of beauty, of freedom, of duty, star of childhood's new protection, that rises so high, we will work for it together, in the golden gay weather, and we'll have it next election, or we will know why. Chorus. A ballot for the lady, for the home and for the baby. Come vote ye for the lady, the baby, the home. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. She Who Is To Come by Charlotte Perkins Gilman Read for LibriVox.org by Beth Thomas a woman, in so far as she beholdeth her one beloved's face, a mother with a great heart that enfoldeth the children of the race, a body free and strong with that high beauty that comes of perfect use is built thereof, a mind where reason ruleth over duty and justice reigns with love, a self-poised royal soul, brave, wise and tender, no longer blind and dumb, a human being of an unknown splendour is she who is to come. End of poem. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. End of Suffrage Songs and Verses by Charlotte Perkins.